Welcome to our daily Bible readings for 2022. In our readings, we are following an ancient pattern of Bible reading and reflection called Lectio Divina. First, we listen to the reading read by one of us. Then we prayerfully consider it as we reflect and meditate upon it. Then after listening to the reading again, we pray the Lord to lead us into the day ahead. Today, we're reading 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 6 to 19. But first, I quieten myself. As I enter prayer now, I pause to be still. I breathe slowly. In Psalm 61 verse 2, we read a prayer of David. Hear my cry, O God. Listen to my prayer. From the ends of the earth I call to you. I call as my heart grows faint. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Loving Heavenly Father, we cry to you today. We call to you today. Lead us again to Jesus. In his name we pray. 1 Timothy 6, 6-19 But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into the world and we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. Those who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. But you, man of God, flee from all of this and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance and gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called when you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. In the sight of God who gives life to everything and of Christ Jesus who, will, who while testifying before Pontius Pilate made the good confession, I charge you to keep this command without spot or blame until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which God will bring about in his own time. God, the blessed and only ruler, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone is immortal and who lives in unapproachable light, whom no one has seen or can see, to him be honour and might for ever. Amen. Command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant, nor to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Command them to do good, to be rich in good deeds and to be generous and willing to share. In this way, they will lay up treasure for themselves as a firm foundation for the coming age so that they may take hold of the life that is truly life. A few years ago, I had the privilege to travel to Zimbabwe I was only there for a week, but came away with so many memories. One of those involved a journey to the north of the country, where white farms had been broken up into homesteads for the black population. On one of those homesteads, we met a family group, two older ladies and a young schoolgirl of about 16 who had a one-year-old boy of her own. They lived in a hut and cooked in a mud hut. They had very little. But the older ladies clearly knew Jesus and showed that in their lives, being joyful and content. And even though they had virtually nothing, they fed us, probably with the food which would have been their dinner that day. Whilst the older ladies had beds and mosquito nets, the young mum and her young son slept on reed mats on the floor without a net, even though they were living in a malaria area of the country. That young lady walked to school each day, three miles up a dirt track that was so potholed it punctured the wheels on one of our vehicles. She even walked that track in labour to the clinic to give birth. I often wonder what became of those four people. But I only realised how much this family group had affected me when the wheels of our plane returning us home left the tarmac at Harare Airport. 
and I found myself in tears. My thoughts were, what makes me so special that I don't have to live here and can return to my privileged lifestyle? Yet in their extreme poverty, they were so generous, that family, and in their little, they still had a joy unknown by so many around us. Maybe that's what this passage today is telling us. Those of us who are rich in the present world, whether that's rich with money or time, we are commanded not to put our trust in that wealth, none of which will last, and none of which we can take with us, but to put our trust in the Lord. Whilst the lack of money is an evil, it is the love of money, not money itself, that is the root of all evil. Trusting in the Lord, not holding on to what we have in the bank, being rich in good deeds, being generous, being willing to share. In doing this, we build a firm foundation for the life that is to come. Verse 7 reads, For we brought nothing into the world, and we can take nothing out of it. You may not have even realised, but this was one of the verses sung by the choir as the coffin of Her Majesty the Queen was carried into Westminster Abbey this week. But the truth is, there is that which we do take out of this world into the next. Paul also wrote in 1 Corinthians 13, and now these three remain, faith, hope and love. But the greatest of these is love. As we all saw in St George's Chapel, Windsor, at the end of the service of committal, the orb, the scepter and the crown were removed from the coffin and placed on the high table. The orb, the scepter and the imperial crown of state, the symbols of monarchy, our Queen had to leave behind. But just as Her Majesty and the Queen knew the sure and certain hope of the life to come, we too can be certain of that hope everlasting. There is that which we cannot lose, that we do take with us. At the end of his address at the Queen's funeral, Archbishop Justin Welby said of the Queen, service in life, hope in death. However rich or however poor you may be in the things of this world, can you think of someone or some situation where you can make a difference, where you can serve both those around you and the Lord? If you can, you must. What is truly your greatest treasure that will pass through life, through death, with you? Let's pray. Father, thank you for all that you have given us. Show each of us, Lord, where you are calling us to be generous and to share all that you have given us. Help us to be joyful in whatever situation we find ourselves as we look to the hope that is to come. 1 Timothy 6, 6-19 But godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into the world and we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. Those who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. But you, man of God, flee from all of this and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance and gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called when you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. In the sight of God who gives life to everything and of Christ Jesus, who, will, who while testifying before Pontius Pilate made the good confession, I charge you to keep this command without spot or blame until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which God will bring about in his own time. God, the blessed and only ruler, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone is immortal and who lives in unapproachable light, whom no one has seen or can see, to him be honour and might for ever. Amen. Command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant, nor to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God, 
who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Command them to do good, to be rich in good deeds, and to be generous and willing to share. In this way, they will lay up treasure for themselves as a firm foundation for the coming age, so that they may take hold of the life that is truly life. And as we close today, Father, help me to walk before you this day, being true to you in every way. Jesus, help me to love you and serve others this day, being kind to everyone I meet. Spirit, help me to love the lonely and the lost this day, proclaiming Christ in word and deed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.